Greetings, welcome. In the world we live in right now, there's a lot of strange things going on. We have uh, wars and rumors of wars and a lot, a lot of crazy stuff going on. So people want to know what God says about this, what God says about that, or what we should we think about this. And when, so there's a lot of things, the Internet and people and ministers and stuff, they're rising up, but they're not biblical teachings. So tonight we're going to take a look at the idea of false prophets and false teachers in the church and how we know the pro false prophets and how we, how we can discern what is true and what's not true. So let's get into it because we've been warned about the Bible. The Bible has warned, given us warnings about, about we were of false prophets. The Bible code also gives us instructions to be wary of false prophets. So let's get this. We have all these warnings about what a false prophets to be warning of. And so let's take a look at what constitutes false prophecies. False prophets. First thing I know is that a false prophet is not accurate. They'll say, blah, 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 this will happen on such and such a date. Then that day comes and it goes and nothing happens. It's like last weekend is supposed to be a weekend of rapture. But oh, the rapture is going to happen this weekend. Oh, it's going the signs and moons and stuff that happen. It's like a prophet a couple of years ago was saying on August fifteenth, Trump's going to be back in office on that day. Well, this is two years later. It hasn't happened yet. So there's a lot of prophets saying that things are going to happen, this won't happen this day, what's happened there, but they're not accurate. And if you're not accurate, you're not hearing from God. God is always accurate. Men of God are always accurate. And they, they are not, false prophets are, are not ever accurate. That's a bad sign. Also, people contradict Scripture, too. They'll tell you, God says this, God says that, but they're contradicting Scripture. God will not contradict it. God will not contradict himself. Another thing is that a lot of people and pastors will glorify themselves. They go, they use the word I, me, I oh, did this, I did this, I did this, me, you know. They they, they lift themselves and glorify themselves. Another thing is that they are obsessed with money. Send me money, send me, I need money. And they just seem they seem like they're they don't have the faith to depend on God. They want to live outside the faith and get your, and take money, in for because they, they don't have the faith to depend on God. Another thing is the false teachings. They say God says this, God, the Bible says God, the Bible says that. For example, a lot of people preachers are preaching an idea of, of uh, replacement theology. The church has replaced Israel. Well, that's false teaching. No one that says that. The church will never replace Israel. Israel will be under a covenant with Christ, with and, and the God, forever, ever. So, replacement theology and all those kinds of things like that, all false teachings. Plus, the people have a religious spirit. Uh, so, you have to follow this. We have to eat this food and do this, do this. There are all these rules and regulations about following Christ that the Bible doesn't say to do that. So another thing that they'll say that they'll have to say what you want them to say. People will say what they think that you want to say. They want to tickle your ears. The in the book of Timothy, Paul tells Timothy not to preach tickling stuff. He says he's preach the word in season, out of season. A lot of people don't do that. They don't want to preach the, the scriptures out of season. They want to preach only in season. They don't want to tickle the ears. So all these, all these indicates that there's false prophets and false teachers. But also the dangers of this is there's a lot of things. That are, the reason they're not accurate, there's a thing called, in magic, magicians use, because it's called cold reading. It's the same technique psychics use. Also, mind reading is used. I've used it in my magic shows. What's simply 
example, you know, walk up to somebody and go, how are you doing? You go, and you go, a person and go, well, I see and perceive that you are a person that likes to travel and you like to seek justice and also, you know, which is very generic, it's very broad. It can, it can, that can play to anything. So what you're, you're saying in cold reading is like you're saying you're using psychology and statistics and you're saying, well, this might happen, you're this and this will happen to you, but it's all very generic. Like a, a, prof, a fake prophet say, will say, well, God wants this to happen. So but there's no nothing to it. It's just just a very generic statement. It can mean anything. So you got to be wary of the, the, the cold reading ideas magicians use and psychics use and other people to use it. That some prophets and I've seen on um, YouTube and stuff, they use the same techniques. So be very careful and worry about that. Also, a lot of these people say, idea of impartations. They'll say, stretch out your hand to the t TV or stretch out hands to the computer or everything. And, and God's going to impart to you a prophetic gift. He can, he can prophesy or something like that. That's false teachings. Because the you know, book of Corinthians says, not everybody receives the gift of prophecy. Not everybody gets the, has that gift. Not everybody has the gift of, you know, speaking tongues either. A lot of people say, yeah, speak tongues to be saved. You know, speaking tongues is so important to people because they want a ma physical manifestation of their faith. They don't have enough faith to re live outside the box and, and, and just let the Holy Spirit control them. And the greatest spiritual gift nobody wants. Do you know what's the greatest spiritual gift? The greatest spiritual gift is love. Paul says the greatest spiritual gift that you get is love. But no one wants love. They want to speak in tongues. They want to prophesy. They want this, they want that. They want to be popular. They want to be head cheese. They want to be have that all attention. Nobody wants simply love one another. That's the greatest spiritual gift you can get. Is to love one another. Another problem is goes on this is seed faith. A lot of preachers and ministers and false prophets will use this. They go, "Won't you send me money? Yes, you know, send me a seed faith. You're gonna send me a thousand dollars. Seed faith is God's going to give you ten thousand dollars." I've seen people preach that, which is totally false. Because you give God thousand dollars, it means he's going to get. He's not a magic genie. God is not controllable about anything we do. We can't give money to get money. That's a false pretense. God is not. God's not moved or manipulated by us trying to manipulate Him. So a lot of people say, you know, a lot of people have given money they need to live to these false teachers. And they really have set themselves up for a lot of hurt because they did that. Because God is not interested in, in having mankind dictate to him what he's going to bless somebody with. It's like you go, you go to Facebook. You know, go to Facebook. You see posts all the time. It says, God, say amen to this post, and God's going to deliver you some money or something. Like that. This, is a, this is not God. That is Satan trying to deceive you. God is not manipulated by you saying amen to a post on Facebook. God's manipulated, does not want to be manipulated by you wanting to manip manipulate him. God's thoughts are higher, our thoughts is God's ways are higher in our ways, Isaiah says. So we got to understand that our situation is different than we, than we think it is at times. 
We have to have faith. So all this means of uh, the false prophets and teachers around Facebook and YouTube and TikTok, all this stuff, social media, all that means is, is what we have to understand the Bible. What, what, what all this comes down to is we have to have faith in the Bible. We need to study the Bible. We need to know the Bible. That way we're not be deceived by these deceivers. We, the Bible is more important than prophets. The Bible is more important than money. The, the Bible is more important than our imaginations and our wants and our desires to be popular. So we have to understand the Bible is the Word of God. And we need to understand the Word of God so we are not manipulated, we're not deceived, we're not falling after false teachers, we're not fa have, falling off after people that are not interested in serving God. They're interested in getting money, people, and being head cheese and manipulated. We have to learn to be the people of God, not the people of the world. Just because a minister says, I'm going to send me $50 to $1,000 and I'll give you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not for sale. You can't buy and sell the Holy Spirit. So we have to understand God is not manipulated by us. Or any of these prophets or any teachers or anything. We have to have faith in God. Live by faith. Live by the Word of God. Not by the manipulation of people. So this week I want to understand God loves you. God cares about you. He got, well, God wants you to get into his word and spend time with him. Turn off the fa Facebook. Turn off the TVs. Turn off the fake preachers. Just go and seek God. Find God where he is at now. Because tomorrow might be too late. We don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. We have these wars, people, rumors of wars and nuclear war people talking about. We don't know what's going to happen. But God does. So don't put your faith in man or any man. Put your faith in Christ. Have a great week. God bless.